Hi, in this video I thought we'd have a look at this LED matrix display. So this was provided to me free of charge by Banggood, it's currently retailing for £35 and it's described as a 32 by 64 uh, colourful music LED display. Um, there's not really a whole lot of detail on this. Um, basically what it says is um, it's got a display 32 by 64 so these are all individual RGB pixels which is why it was quite interesting to me. Um, it comes with this STM32 based um, little PCB um, and then I think all that this in its current format does is it su suggests that it uh, is a spectrum analyzer. Um, there's a few things about infrared remote controls and that kind of thing, but it didn't come with a remote control or anything else, or in fact any documentation. So um, there's going to be a little bit of reverse engineering to do if we want to do anything with this other than uh, what it does shipped from Banggood. So I've connected this up to a power bank and my phone that's playing some music, and you can see it's providing some really nice looking uh, sort of spectrum analyzer. Uh, type images on the display. Um, there's a couple of buttons on the PCB which let you choose the colours for the bars and the peak hold. So um, you can pick from the primary colours or mixtures of um, red, green and blue, uh, but there's no colours other than that that would require um, sort of PWM values. So it's only doing primary colours or direct mixes of that. And the other button changes the colour of the, uh, the actual bars. But um, I mean, in my opinion, that looks quite nice. Uh, again, it's something that could lend itself nicely to um, connecting a microphone to it so it responds to your voice in the background if you just want something on the wall. Um, but I have seen other videos where these sort of kits have provided spectrum analyzer type images on the screen, but um, actually it's just a pre-programmed waveform and it sort of adjusts depending on how loud the volume is. And there's not really a whole lot on this PCB, so I don't know how capable this 30 STM32 um, microcontroller is. Um, it's just sort of got this audio buffer and filter and then straight into the ADC. So um, it needs to be able to run at a reasonable sample rate to do the FFT sort of full spectrum. So I think what we'll do is we'll hook it up to the signal generator and get it to produce sine waves and see if we can see this going up in accordance or see whether it's um, you know, just making up the waveform. Right, so I've just hooked this up to the signal generator set to a sine wave, so we should just get a single bar. Um, it's currently set to uh, 500 hertz, so if we start sweeping up in 100 hertz steps, and there we go. So that is genuinely doing uh, a proper FFT on the frequency spectrum. And this last bar is about 10 kilohertz, so that's uh, 1 kilohertz at the bottom here, all the way up to um, 10 kilohertz. And that's showing fairly good um, rejection of frequencies outside of each bin in the FFT, so um, yeah, it's not too bad at all. And there we go, so that's a square wave with the third, uh, fifth and the seventh harmonic. Um, actually, the ninth harmonic's just off slightly. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the harmonics caused by the sharp edges on the square wave. Right, what it is, is um, it's one of these fairly standard dot matrix arrays. You can buy these on eBay and AliExpress. I don't think Banggood sell them, uh, but it's described as a P4 32 by 64 RGB display. Um, and it's got all the um, sort of shift registers and LED drivers on the back, and you just sort of feed it uh, pixel data and it will display whatever um, you feed to it. And then we've got this little PCB that came with it, uh, which is programmed with sort of a spectrum analyzer thing. Uh, and what we've got on here is um, basically an STM32, a bunch of shift registers, um, so you can drive more than one display if you wanted to. Uh, it's got a couple of buttons, and then it's got an audio input with an audio buffer and a little bit of filtering, and then a DC jack. Um, and then you have these two cables that go off to the display. So uh, it takes a five volt input, uh, it does draw quite a lot of current if you do have all of the pixels on, so um, it comes with a USB connector, but if you're going to plug it into something, it probably ought to be a, uh, a phone charger that can handle the two amps or so. Uh, and then it's got this cable that goes off to the display and the data uh, cable that comes with it as well. But the, uh, the display itself is quite interesting. It's, um, they're all individually controlled RGB LEDs, uh, and on the back there's some shift registers and then there's some shift registers combined with uh, constant current LED drivers. 
So what they are, are these um, TC5020 AP LED drivers. And um, this website's really cool. Um, it's called LCSC. It's a uh, supplier of semiconductors and other electronic components. It's part of the Easy EDA and uh, JLC PCB group. Um, but they've got all of the Chinese chips, the ones that you can't seem to get in the UK on their own. So there's a, you know, in terms of um, LED drivers and all that kind of stuff, there's tons on there that would be really interesting. So I might have a look through and see if we can come up with some fun uh, LED projects in the future that use these slightly obscure chips uh, that actually integrate a whole load of features. So they're actually really good. I just um, I kind of find it odd that they don't appear on our um, distributors in the in Europe. So Farnell and RS don't sell these kinds of chips, but they're actually really useful. Um, but this chip in particular, um, the data sheet's in Chinese, but you can use um, Google Translate with your phone and, and hover over it and work out what it's doing. Uh, but basically, it's, it's working a bit like one of the 74HC595 shift register chips. So you shift in your data, then you can latch it into uh, the latches so um, you don't get any ghosting as you're shifting in all of the data to all of your pixels if you're driving a big array. Uh, and then you just set the output enable uh, bit and that turns on the outputs and then it also has these constant current drivers so you, you sort of set the current with um, one pin here and then all of the LEDs uh, will be set with a constant current so it really integrates quite a lot of features uh, and it gives some information about how it all works but it is basically um, basically a 74HC595 shift register with constant current driver. Um, so there's not really that much in the way of documentation. I had a search uh, on the internet on these displays. I didn't find a huge amount of information. There was um, a few hints in a few um, data sheets um, for similar products. So um, you can see here we've sort of got three lots of, uh, sorry, two lots of RGB data uh, and then a, a, B, C and D line selection um, and then the clock latch and output enable. And basically what I've worked out is that uh, we have this array of 32 uh, by 32 LEDs and then it just copied into another one to make the 64 display. I think you can buy it as a 32 by 32 and various other combinations. Uh, but you sort of, um, you multiplex it at a rate of 1 to 16. Um, so what it does is when you drive in the binary input, it sort of uh, multiplexes row 1 and uh, row 17 here and then it moves down and displays um, two rows at a time, so at the top and, and this row here. But then you send in two lots of RGB data. So there's a shift register associated with, the, with these um, top blocks here, and then a shift register associated with these bottom ones here. Um, so you're sort of shifting in parallel lots of data um, to drive all of the, uh, the pixels in a, in a slightly more timely manner. And it means that you don't have a really um, short multiplexing time. Um, you know, if, if you didn't do this with 1 to 16 multiplexing, it would be 1 to 32, and then you're going to have to drive a lot of current through the LEDs. Um, so you're sort of driving um, two rows at a time. But um, what I thought would be cool in a future video is I've got an ESP32 module, and there are loads of libraries. Um, so the slightly frustrating thing is, and I, I suspect is why there's not a lot of detail about how these are all wired up, is most people will probably just take the library from an Arduino library uh, and just use it directly and just display it and don't care about how it works. Um, I still find that a difficult thing to do. Uh, I like to know how these work and then usually I will write my own driver of some kind. But the ESP32 does work with the Arduino toolchain. So what I thought we might do in the future um, is use this ESP32 to drive this display uh, and we can use it as an NTP uh, based clock and calendar and that kind of thing so we can get the time off the internet uh, and just display it on the screen so this would be sort of self-contained we'll get a little PCB ma made that will allow this ESP32 module to sit on the back and it will just connect to the Wi-Fi and get the time and we can have a nice display of time and date on here which I thought would be quite cool. I have requested from Banggood to see if they're able to get hold of the code or any documentation for this chipset uh, just because it would be a nice way of um, starting the development on this particular board because you can program it, you've got the, um, the programming header just here on the PCB um, so it would be nice to be able to update the code on this to make it do whatever you want and if you've got the code that they've used for this 
um, to start off with as a base then obviously the hurdle to modifying it for your own purposes is a lot less than trying to reverse engineer it all and get it all working. Uh, but like I said, I think on the on a future video what we're going to do is make a little PCB to fit this ESP32 module on uh, and then we'll try and create the time and the date on this display uh, and maybe do it in nice colours and stuff like that. So um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, there's a link in the description for this item if you want to purchase it or want to have a look anyway because there's, a, there's a, a few different versions. There's the slightly smaller display. Um, there's one that's a similar size but less pixels and much bigger LEDs. So uh, if you want to have a look at some of those products, follow the link in the description. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching.